and welcome on Sport Update on Trust TV. Um, Adeni Ajishafe. Well, we quickly look at stories trending in the world of sport. It's, uh, the uh, Sports uh, Ministry, that's the Nigerian Ministry of Sport right now. They've come up with the uh, postponement of the youth games that are supposed to be coming up in Delta State from 7th and night has been shifted. And right now, we'll be looking at uh, that particular story along others uh, with uh, Olawale Peters. Good to have you. Thank you, Adeni. It's my pleasure to be back to study. Yes, let's start with the first story. Sport Ministry uh, confirmed new date for 2023 uh, national youth games that will be coming up in asaba <laughs> data state they shifted it uh, towards the end of the month because uh, according to afn president they are trying to see how they can perfect all the logistics and everything put in place ahead of the competition so that there won't be any uh, room for or any vacuum for mistakes they want to perfect everything the athletes uh, the room everything that has to do with that particular national youth games and a lot of Nigeria, okay since it's going to come up this same september is still okay for the national youth games where a lot of talents have been discovered national youth game national sports festival, festival. we have two yes national 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 i think apart from uh, trying to get the stadium the infrastructure ready there's need for us to also look at the process leading to all this competition now when you're talking about national youth game right what comes to my mind it's for those that are below 18 years of age. Mm -hmm. And if you have been following the events, the people that normally come to this event... This is Nigeria. They are like, they are like, they are, they are like you, claiming under 18. <laughs> claiming under 18. So, uh, yeah, and that's... Know, I, I, actually, that as is, I am, um, I, can, I can do under 18, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll bring the right <laughs> machine to come and test you now. <laughs> so uh, I think we need to look into the process. We need to have a plan that what is the purpose of having this competition mm -hmm. not just because he wants to have it now the best way in my own opinion to do this is to reintroduce the uh, principal's call the entire sport and pick people from each school each zone mm -hmm. each geopolitical zone you have people that will come and represent javelin short put uh, 100 meters 200 meters 400 by 100 meters football all of them will be from the secondary school. And when you are having this competition, you should be having it once in a year, and it should be done during the third time vacation, when you have about six weeks or eight weeks, so that all the students will be out of school during that period, and they will concentrate on it. That is the best way to develop the youth sport program in the country. And also it's something that we need to take Run the city geopolitical zone to develop each zone when it comes to sport development. It's either we we'll go to Edo or we we'll go to Delta. So it is high time also that they have to decentralize it. That is one of the reasons why they have to postpone it because they just finished uh, this competition from Delta not quite long and they want to have another one again. So you know the wear and tear will really take effect on the infrastructure that they the have. Facilities the facilities they've been using. The facility, the infrastructure that they have in place. So that's one of the reasons why I think they are postponing it. But this can be avoided. If the government don't have the money, I will repeat again, like for the one million times, let private individual comes in and organize this competition. Hmm. Or, or companies. Hmm. Or companies. Let them come in As sponsors. and sponsor this competition. So based on that, the, the, the amount of pressure on the government when it comes to spending on sports will reduce drastically. So these are the way I think we need to go. Yeah, they postpone it for a good cause, but the aim of, that, uh, of the competition to me has been defeated. This is where we should be picking our golden eaglets. This is where we should be preparing those that will represent Nigeria when it comes to Commonwealth when it comes to an uh, Olympic qualifiers, these are the African games. African games. So this is an opportunity to really catch them young, to develop the skills that they really need and do what and nurture it. Give them the necessary training, give them the necessary exposure that they need to excel. That is why you can hear a player or an athlete. Look at uh, the likes of uh, Nokovokik, for example the William sister for example mm. they started so young when did they very start? young look at the likes of Leno Messi look at the likes of Ronaldo where's Tayo Tayo today uh, he's, uh, he's playing in Finland 
Finland? Yes, it's in Finland. It's what, 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 a, what a competitive... And Mikkel you know, is uh, uh, SA to Governor of Plateau State on sport. So that is what we are talking about. They are about. doing well. Yeah. <laughs> we, are yeah, about, we, are. we are talking about people that they really need to... They should have a uh, 10 to 15 years lifespan of course. representing the national team. Not those that they are close to 40. They will come in, they will say they are 20. Remember the case of... Uh, uh, is it Philip Osondu? Hmm. Now they said no. You are still young. Be watching your senior players, your senior your senior <laughs> players play without knowing that he's even the grandfather to the senior to the players, players before it happens to him. So what we really need to do is to get them very young, and this will be an opportunity. I hope they are listening. I hope they will look into this. Come next year, they should look and review the process and really get them from the school. And this will even give those that are. They, they want to, they've chosen sports as their career, but they don't have the avenue and the opportunity to do that, to go back to school. Because going to school will give them the opportunity to represent their school during this competition. Mm. So that means you are taking people away from the streets back to the school. Those days when they are playing the principal's cup, those days, the likes of uh, Femi Pabumi, go to Ibadan and ask who is his nickname used to be Gascoigne. Paul Gascoigne. Yes. He actually he played, keep that name there. He played, he, played, he played for more than seven secondary schools in Ibadan. Ibadan Boys High School, Ibadan Grammar School, Methodist Boys. They were hiring him. <laughs> Every year, he would be in SS3. Oh my goodness. They would pay for his money. So those people, what they need to do is to have an avenue to showcase their talent. And that is what I think we really need by this national youth. youth. Games. Uh, game that we have to do. I hope they are listening. I hope they do something about it. Well, National Youth Games are supposed to start from 7th of September to 17 has been shifted to 28th till uh, end of the month. And hopefully all the teams that will be participating in uh, Delta State, besides in Asaba, will be rearing to go. Well, that's the story we're looking at for the first one. And now we quickly go to the second one. A Nigerian who play his trade in German Bundesliga. He just moved to join Bayern Leverkusen. His name is Victor Boniface. Right now has been nominated as uh, for rookie player of the month in Germany for the fact that he has been able to do well four goals uh, so uh, right now for himself and also doing so well since he moved to join Bayer Leverkusen and the man has been on fire. Quickly, let's look at the list of the three uh, three players nominated for that award that will be coming up. Victor Boniface, Bayer Leverkusen, Zervi Simon, RB Leipzig, and you have Nana Atubolu of uh, SC Freiburg also among the shortlisted candidates for the Rookie Player of the Month for August. Well, and I'm not surprised. And two matches, four goals and two assists. Mm. And I think it's fantastic. You can't rule it out. If there won't be any sentiment or what have you, I think he should get the Player of the Month award. And he's very aggressive, very pacey. He has goal sense. He knows what to do with the ball. And he's a team player also. That's why he made two assists from the two games and scored four goals also. So I think it's a very good one for him. And I think it's an opportunity for him to launch himself, just like we had Taiwo. When Taiwan winning, he left German League and came to Premier League. It was looking a, a little kind of bleak, bleak for him. That mm. oh, is it the Taiwan didn't that we used to know? But look at him right now. He has played he has four. Peaked. He has played four matches this season and he has caught three goals. So this is an opportunity for him also to do what to try and launch himself into the world. That no, I have I've have really really arrived. So a very good one. So I'm confident uh, without any sentiment. And um, by the time the the supporters finish their voting, because they normally use based on supporters' votes to pick their player of the month. I think he should be able to win it because that would be a motivation for him. My first season, my first month, I won Rookie player of the month. Of the month. So I think it's a very good one for him. Uh, and aside that, he also made the court for. Uh, uh, Ozzy Pizero's list uh, that will play uh, this weekend over there in Uyo for the Cup, rather World Cup qualifiers. Although we we actually we've qualified, but they play against Altuve and Principe. And if you look at it, Victor Boniface made that squad alongside Gift Oban. Uh, also, these are a lot of uh, new en entrants uh, getting to that team. A lot of new players uh, that will be debuting in Uyo. But uh, a lot of people are looking at wow. But let's see. But uh, if you notice. No, except maybe the goalkeeper of uh, is he Ayimba now? I don't really know that mm -hmm. made that cut. Mm -hmm. Everyone from foreign land. That's actually the problem, and that is why we are talking about Jose Pizero is not the right coach for us. You, that you are not the national 
uh, you are not the team coach of Nigeria. You know what Boniface is doing because you watch the league. You know what Gift Urban is doing. What he did last season mm. and what he's still doing. So all the players, we knew what they can do. We know what they've been doing. That is not what we need now. We need players that will come and compete with those that have been established. Tell me one, two, or three players that Jose Pizarro has identified for mm. this country. Well, he brought uh, now from the last list. Maybe we can have that list back on the screen. They are the Super Eagles list for uh, the World Cup uh, qualifier against South America and Principe. But uh, if you look at it, uh, well, <laughs> You look at uh, you don't need to look for you don't need to look for you don't need to look for your look at Jordan Trunariga uh, at least his first time you look at uh, uh, like I mentioned Victor Boniface you look at uh, uh, Gift Orban is also the first time uh, like as you ask the question that what, what is the player I discovered these are <laughs> I new players I didn't need in this competition as far as I'm concerned you can't tell me mm. that Gift Orban is a new player. Oh, of course, no, uh, no for super new, egos. It's not, no, he's not a new player. Even <laughs> if you are not a coach, you know what gift Urban. It's called actual classes in during the Champions League. We knew what he did. So you can't tell me that we don't know who is gift Urban. You can't tell me that we don't know who is burning face. We are talking about let him tell us a player that he discovered, probably from the local league. The same way we had the likes of um, what, do, what do you call it? The likes of. Um, then um, Amunike in, okay. their, in their days, Amokachi, Seasia, Rashidi Yakini, Gigi Okosha. We had in their days Ucho Kichuku, Tom Siolea, Friday Ekpo. That is what we are talking about here. So you need to establish those players that we don't know, we've not heard about them. Let's criticize you that, ah, who is this player, unknown player now? And let the player come and prove himself. And from there we said, oh, the coach, you have a very good scout. But he doesn't have it. This is someone that doesn't work. We are not developing our domestic league. We are just bringing people from outside. That me and you can sit at the comfort of our of our room, watch the league, and say, "Oh, this is a good player." I yeah, come and bring play. me. This and, is a good player. and and come funny and enough, come and uh, as uh, the Afcon qualifier, sorry for calling World Cup qualifier there. Uh, right now, we've qualified. We can use home base. Out of all these 23 or 24 players that you invited, you can call 13 home base. Let them just go there. Use it to discover this talent. Call maybe even only five foreign players should be among them. The rest, why bring in all, all of them except Olorun Leki Ojo? That does it mean it's not as if we want to qualify for anything? It's not as if we've already qualified. Use home base players. Let them even play this match. Let's even see what we can do. Against Automi, I'm very sure. Home base uh, uh, players can do something good. Okay, thanks um, for aligning with me for the first time. When it comes to the issue of Jose Pizarro, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the truth. You know, you have been a spokesperson in one way or the other. Oh, for, maybe now, he's giving me some this, message. <laughs> this, this is an opportunity to let the, uh, our foreign base player to rest and focus on their career. They just started their league. They will come home and play with South Tome and principal players that they are hungry for, so they are, they are ready to break leg. A majority of them. I mean, no, they are playing in Europe. No, they are not playing in Europe. So they want to make name for they themselves. They are like, uh, uh, what's the name of that country? Toga and whatever. <laughs> Where the player are mechanics and plumber and this. They are playing together. <laughs> so this is an opportunity to assemble uh, Team B or Team C for the Super Eagles. So by the time you are throwing the camp open in preparation for the Nations Cup, let everybody, let's do open camp. Let everybody comes in. No preferential treatment for anybody and let everybody come and mm. slug it out for their shirt. So that is what we are talking about. I see no reason why then. This is a country that we are trying to cost the, we are trying to cost the cost of governance. The cost of bringing all these foreign base player. At least the low, ticket for the cost flight. The ticket, flight, hotel. accommodation and everything to take it back also. It's something they should look into. They should look at the importance of this Qualifier. Imagine getting all these players from home base. Just call two or three internationals just to garnish them. Let them come from uh, lobby stars, from Ayimba, from shooting stars, from uh, El Kanemi. Bring them together. In fact, if you even see from the NNL, bring them. Let them come. From How everywhere. much would you pay for them to fly from wherever they are down to Uyo? Get the hotel for them. They, they settle them their money and then they go back for the allowance. They'll be very happy because most of them, they travel by road to go and play there. And then you give them tickets. Fly, come so, on, come on, so, enjoy. So that, 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 is, that is the reason why if you have a, 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 our own coach or someone that knows what he's doing, 
you have to look at it. What is at stake? If I lose to South Tony on principle, am I going to the Nations Cup? You've qualified. Nations Cup, I've qualified. So now, between now and the Nations Cup, I need to play how many matches? Four or five matches. And these four or five matches, let me use three matches to build another team. Call unknown names, unknown players mm. to come and represent the country. The last two matches, let me now look at the blend of the old players and the new players before I throw the camp open and make my selection. This is a strategy. This is how it should be done. But unfortunately, unfortunately, we don't have uh, we don't have someone that can really do that. Well, we just have to dive to that particular story. They are talking from uh, Victor Boniface and go down to Super Eagles list because he made that cut. Right now, he has been nominated as uh, player of the month for August over there in German Bundesliga. A good one for Victor Boniface. Also looking at Gift Urban's doing so well over there in uh, Belgian Jupila League. A lot of Nigerians are really doing well this season. I'm just hope that they continue to blow hot over there in Europe. Right now, we still talk about football, but we talk about a Manchester United player who also played for the Selecao of Brazil. His name is Anthony. Anthony is right now having issues because he has been dropped from the list of Brazil that will be playing in their qualifiers. Brazil dropped Man United's Anthony after assault allegations from El's girlfriend. The El's girlfriend said, well, he actually uh, dealt with her one way or the other. But right now, that has brought issues concerning Anthony. Brazil quickly, quickly, uh, it, it was among those listed for their match, but now it has been dropped. Okay, I think the, the psychologist in Manchester United has a lot of work to do on their players. That's the truth. And this is so sad that it's coming again from a Manchester United, United player. players. We knew what uh, Mason Greenwood. Greenwood went through and this is coming up again. So um, I think maybe they allowed the, the fame to get into them and believe that uh, they can do and uh, undo. Well, the investigation is ongoing and you know at times also uh, the ladies also something that they, is They can not, be funny. They can be very, very, very <laughs> funny but um, there's no fire without a smoke. If something didn't lead to that, she won't just come out and say this is what happened. So I think she should be thoroughly investigated. Both the psychologists in Manchester United, among their coaching crew, has a lot of work to do in talking to all these players <coughs> to let them understand that what an ordinary man or ordinary person would do. You as you, a professional. As a professional and as a star, you cannot do it and get away with it. Well, I remember, just like we said, I agree, this is his ex girlfriend. But look at Mendy's case. Mendy's case, everybody almost cast that guy out. In fact, Manchester City, everybody departed until it was proven actually uh, right guilty. because he was pretty uh, not guilty. And it was so painful because his career almost, uh, well, it's just, uh, it's lucky that the club in France quickly picked him up. But really, uh, not every player will escape that. His career was almost <laughs> totally ruined just because of uh, uh, someone uh, alleging, allegedly accusing me, uh, him wrongly and <laughs> the whole world almost fell for it until he was actually proven uh, to be uh, not to be guilty so right now for issue of anthony maybe as you said investigation let's see what happens maybe uh, it will be cleared yes uh, let's let's see what happened and it's also a message that we should be careful out there and probably we should learn from the likes of uh, Lionel messi cristiano ronaldo, ronaldo. Ah, they've been doing it and they are getting and the even Ronaldo's accused sometimes uh, even over there in the but US. But all, all, all the accusation is still being proved. Nothing, hmm. nothing come out of it. I think we should just be careful out there, especially, especially, and I repeat, especially when we are dealing with our mothers, we should be very, very, very careful. A lot of what our mothers. We have to be very careful as a professional player. We just have to be very careful. A lot of uh, footballers falling prey to a lot of issues there. Some could be right. Some could be actually rather true or untrue. But right now. Concerning Anthony, he has been dropped by a Brazilian team and now he won't be playing in their qualifier. Let's look at two months before we wrap it up. Sergio Ramos he used to play, he started his career as a footballer with Sevilla, but right now he's back. After 18 <coughs> years, Sergio Ramos, known for one of the toughest uh, defenders in the world, he did well with Real Madrid, he moved to PSG and now he's back. A lot of clubs came for him from Saudi Arabia. He decided, in fact, Manchester United wanted to sign him. But he opted back to his boyhood club, Sevilla, 18 that, years after. That's a legend. Mm. And I recall he joined Sevilla when he was seven years old. That was when he joined the Sevilla youth team. And he left them when he was 16 years old to Real Madrid. And he was in Real Madrid for almost 16 good years. And um, it's a defender that is very rugged. 
when he's on top of your situation as an attacker. Mm. Go and ask. You are uh, in trouble. Go and ask Musala. <laughs> what happens to Musala during the world, during the Champions League? Champions League, and it's also an attack. <clears throat> I mean, a defender that even had more goals in than his some career strikers. than some strikers. He has a, one hundred and one goals in his entire career. He's the most capped player in Spanish team. So with all this that he has, he has won everything: World Cup, European Cup, Champions League, World Club Cup. Uh, La Liga. Mention any trophy. He has won everything. So money is not the issue for him. What is the issue for him is to give back to the, Where you all started. To the club mm. that he started from. So that's why he's going back to Sevilla. Probably will play for them a year or two years. Then from there, he's going to retire. That is the best way mm. to have a happy ending. Well, just hope that uh, Sevilla will get the best from uh, Rasa G. Ramos. The last one has to do with Pepe Nicolas. That's been a, a player of Arsenal. He moved there, 72 million, and that didn't go well. They loaned him out, and now with OGC in his back to Arsenal, he wants to leave now. And Besiktas of Turkey are really trying, they are edging closer to get him on a deal on a nominal fee. Well, um, I think it's best for both uh, Arsenal and the player to move. This is a player that came with a lot, a lot, a lot of expectation thinking that it will solve most of the uh, most of the Arsenal's problem, especially in front of, of goals. But unfortunately, like we've seen in most of these other players, that they will do very well in particular league. But when it comes to Premier League, it doesn't suit their, their, their style. style. So the best is for them to go and rediscover themselves and start playing their trade. I don't see any reason why Arsenal should keep him on their payroll, why he doesn't have a place in the team. Let them just offload him count their losses and move on with it. The players and the team and the club will both be happy. Well, that's it concerning uh, Nicolas Pepe there. Coming from Larry Peters, they should just uh, let him go. Besiktas is calling and hopefully he can rediscover himself over there in Turkish uh, Super League. That will be it on the show. Sport update on Trust TV with Larry Peters. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks so much, Adeni. It's my pleasure being here all the time. Good one there. I'm Adeni Ajishafe. Thanks for watching.